Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to make some copper acetate. For this you will only need copper, metal, distilled water and acetic acid. You can also just use dilute acetic acid instead of glacial acetic acid and distilled water but choose what you have on your hands. Let's start. Because today we are only dealing with copper and not with lead, I decided to use a normal gas washing bottle and not some makeshift single-use stuff. Copper was transferred to our gas washing bottle. Add in as much copper as you want. More copper is better because it increases the surface area. First distilled water was added and this was followed by glacial acetic acid. As mentioned, dilute acetic acid can also be used. A more or less large amount of acetic acid was added. With some shaking, we managed to get the gas bubbling tube all the way down to the bottom. Because acetic acid doesn't really react with copper metal, you have to add oxygen or hydrogen peroxide. We will add in oxygen to oxidize the copper metal to copper oxide first, which will then react with the acetic acid to form copper acetate, because it's way cheaper than using hydrogen peroxide. But the way involving the bubbling of oxygen through all of this stuff here takes a long time and hydrogen peroxide is the faster route. To accomplish this, we are going to use this aquarium pump used for bubbling oxygen into an aquarium. We simply attach this tube to here, to a gas bubbler, and this tube right here leads outside because we don't want to have the smell of acetic acid in this room. Pump was switched on and we simply had to wait. You can see that a lot of air is being bubbled through the copper. After only half an hour, nice and blue tint became absorbable. Four days later, we were left with this. Actually, a lot of copper acetate has been formed. The apparatus was disassembled and it seemed like this top part has been stuck. This is because there's a really solid mass of copper and copper acetate that's clumped together and I'll figure out a way to remove this top part. We ended up simply washing out all of the copper acetate using distilled water. Afterwards, we cleaned the copper metal using hydrochloric acid and distilled water because we do not need to throw this away and we can use this stuff for other experiments. The beaker was then taken outside and we boiled off most of the acetic acid and water. We actually ended up just boiling it down to 100 ml, around 100 milliliters, because copper acetate will decompose when it gets stored. Therefore we took it off the hot plate and we will put it into a desiccator. We first crashed out most of the copper acetate using a fridge and this was followed by vacuum filtration. Afterwards, we simply pulled the vacuum for two more minutes to dry it completely. Copper acetate was then transferred to properly labeled storage bag. By the way, this bag has been pre-weighed and we did that because we wanted to determine how much copper to acetate monohydrate we actually produced. And there you have it, 6 grams of copper 2 acetate, monohydrate only from acetic acid, air and copper. By the way, this solution is not going to the trash, we are going to use it again and we will recycle it. If you liked this video, make sure to drop in one of these and consider subscribing to my channel for more stuff like this in the future. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time, bye.